Hello, welcome to chapter number two, which is polymer attributes. In this chapter, we'll begin by creating a web component and we will ensure that web, that web component can take an attribute value from the HTML code and that we could use that, that attribute value and show it inside a web component using data binding. So we have actually created a web component like in chapter one, the only difference is the no script element is removed because we are using a script element and in the script element we're just saying polymer. Now what we're going to do is in the my template I'm just, I'm just gonna say inside a spam my element so we know that a web component is behaving properly and it's rendering. In this case it's again like chapter one we have including a script of web component and then importing a web component and using it. So if I actually go ahead and say show the web component in a page, it's gonna show like my element. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two attributes to this. And I'm gonna say one is name and one is counter. And then I'm gonna use those things over here saying name is name and counter is counter then i'm going to go and just simply show this and you will see that both these values are blank and they're blank because uh, they're undefined so if i want to provide a default value what i need to do is simply add an object to polymer and this object you mention all the attributes which you can so if you have a attribute value you can initialize it to some defaults over here and once you've done that you go and refresh you will see that it gets reflected but the main use of adding attributes is that you can assign values from the elements which you're using in your HTML code. So if I say the name is custom element and the counter is 10, you will see that thing changing over here. So far, we have seen how to assign simple attributes and use them in data binding. And we also seen how to provide default values to those. Next, what you're going to see is, can we actually um, define these attributes, not over here, but somewhere in the code. So I'm gonna remove this thing from over here, and I'm going to remove this thing from here as well. And I'm gonna say, I wanna publish some properties in the code, and that's where I'm saying publish these two properties one is name as my element and second thing is counter as let's say one this time so remove those from over here and put them over here and you will see the end result is just the same it's just that i need to remove these assignments and i'll see the change so you'll see my element and one now why do we do this if writing attributes over here is so simple that's because let's say instead of name you have something called as style attribute which is a complex object we are saying do i have bold do i have italics do i have underline and in this case i'm just using a object but i could very well have it array over here. Now when I'm mentioning a style attribute like this, I need to change things over here and say style has bold has one of those things. So if I go and 
open them in the browser, you will say style has bold as false. And that's very nice, but how do you expansion this complex attribute in HTML code? And I simply have to say style attribute in single quotes bold is true. And once I mention that, you will see it converts to true. So I can mention those things over here. Now, let's say if I have to give, uh, if I do initialize my object in our array, the right way of doing that is actually something called as created method. And in this method, this lifecycle method, I can mention this dot style attribute dot bold is equal to true. Similar things for other things. And if I remove this guy from over here, you'll still see bold as true. So the whole idea is you use the created method if you want to initialize your complex objects, which are objects which are attributes or arrays which are attributes. So this is how you use them. Now coming back to this, we have covered defining complex attributes and lifecycle methods. Next, we're going to focus on change handlers for attributes. So let's get rid of this complex attribute. Um, or let's leave it and let's focus on some other, um, let's focus on counter. So what we want to do now is uh, Whenever the value of counter changes, I want to be notified about that. So I'm saying counter changed, simple as that. And in this, I'm saying that's it. And then I'll say console counters value change from. value to new value and we'll do one more thing over here we'll say on click call this method colors on click so I'm gonna say on click function and this dot counter is equal to 22. So when I run this code over here, if I click on this, the value changes to 22, but more importantly, I get notified. So currently the value is one, and I click over here, the onClick function is called, and the onClick function I'm changing the counter to 22, and it's been captured by the counter change. So, there I go. Now, one important aspect is, while you're doing that, your counter, your counter value is not changed over here. So for example, if I go here and I say counter is equal to five, and I provide that, you have counter is equal to five, I click on that, it becomes 22. But in the code, in the DOM, it still remains counter is equal to five. Sometime what we need to do is we need to change the value in the DOM from within our web component. So for example, in this code where I'm setting the value to 22, I also want this value, the DOM to change to 22. But, but that is very rare. You don't need to always do that. But let's say you need to do that, then here's a way of doing that. So you give counter an object and you say the value is one and reflect is equal to true. Now what this does is any value which is changed in memory for that particular attribute is reflected back in the DOM. 
So let's see how. Now we are seeing five over here. And I click on here, it changes from 522, but also the value in the DOM changes. Now this is different than data binding uh, in, a, in a way that the actual value of the attribute in the DOM is changed when the value inside the element is changed. So with that, we have covered all the aspects of attributes for Polymer. Thank you so much.